Hey guys, on this episode of Crap Vegas, we will talk about what has left Vegas that we'd like to see return, a wrap up on F1, and so much more. So stick around. Welcome to the Crap Vegas Podcast. Vegas, here we come. Vegas. Here are your hosts, Chris and Josh. Hello and welcome to episode number 42 of the Crap Vegas Podcast. I am Chris, he's Josh. Josh, what's new this week? Well, everybody's probably full from their Thanksgiving dinners because by the time this episode drops, people will have celebrated Thanksgiving, if that's your thing, and watched lots of football and ate lots of stuffing and mashed potatoes. All, all good things there. Um, screw you Canadians, I guess. You don't get to celebrate all that stuff, but... <laughs> No, you I'm have, sure, bo- sure you have Boxing a- Day. They have Boxing Day. Yeah, exactly. They get things that we don't get. I'm sure it'll be an amazing week for everybody. I know I got to get the house cleaned up tonight as we're recording this on Wednesday evening uh, for everybody coming over tomorrow to celebrate. And I'm not ready for it, Josh, because I just got back from my cruise. I'm absolutely exhausted. And the last thing I want to think about is cleaning. I totally understand. Chris, what's your favorite Thanksgiving food? What's your go-to? Ooh, good question. Um... I'm a huge gravy guy, so pretty much anything you can put gravy on. So anything cookie, smothered in gravy. <laughs> I mean, I'm good with all those things. I'm not one of those new age people that wants like mac and cheese and stuff like that at Thanksgiving. I don't think that has a place. Uh, I, but saw, I can tell saw. you what I hate the most. Yeah. Cranberries. I cannot stand cranberries. I like them out of the jar, you know, where, I mean, out of the can where it's shaped like the can. So does my uh, so did my dad before he passed away. We'd always have to put a can on the table <laughs> just for him. Um, and he was the only person that really wanted to eat it, and everybody else thought it was gross. But I think that's a, a pretty common thing. Yeah. Mine is stuffing. I like the stuffing. Oh, yeah. Stuffing can be that's, good. Unless it has mushrooms. Now, have you ever had White Castle stuffing? <laughs> I've never eaten at a White Castle. Yeah. Period. I, full uh, stop. Okay. Well, I don't know if it's just like a, a regional thing near me that people do this, but a lot of people in my area literally buy White Castles and then make a stuffing out of it using the bread and the meat and all that stuff. Okay, yeah. And it's a whole thing because stuffing, you know, it has bread and has onions and all the things right. that White Castles have. Um, so that's very popular around me. Um, but maybe that's not a national thing, obviously. And with gravy, it feeds right into Waffle House for you. Oh, absolutely. That's just <laughs> I mean, terrific. I am going to warn everybody in advance on this episode, I am starting to lose my voice. I blame the cruise. I don't think it's COVID. I hope it's not COVID, (laughs) Um, but uh, it is slowly going. So I have a feeling by the time you get to the last 10, 15 minutes of this episode, I'm going to sound like shit. I'm I'm going to be doing all the talking. Yes. So I have to ask you just a couple cruise related questions, Chris, before we get into the meat of the episode. Did you guys, you went to the Bahamas, right? We did. Did you do any fun excursions? Uh, The only thing we did when we were at their private island, we reserved a private cabana so that we could have some nice enjoyment and luxury and have people wait on us hand and foot. Right. Um, And that is not an understatement at all, Josh. Um, Having a private cabana attendant was absolutely amazing. There was a button on the table inside the cabana and it (laughs) rang his watch and he would immediately come and running over. He was asking what we could ever want drink wise and food wise. And the kids were like, I want mozzarella sticks and cookies and he said you know neither one of those is on the menu <laughs> but for you guys i got it and but i will make it 20 happen minutes yes. later with like 60 mozzarella sticks for four people <laughs> and at least 40 cookies like two full baskets full and then he gave us a box to take them home drinks were refilled immediately he brought sand toys for my son to play with i mean just absolutely amazing service i can't say enough good things about the attendance at coco Cay. Oh, that's fun. That's really neat. Did I ever tell you that my favorite excursion on our Alaska cruise, which we came back with COVID, so that was our cruise experience, but did I tell you about the railroad when I took the railroad trip? No, so we went. Not. We had an Alaska trip this summer, and this is slightly off topic from our show, but we're going we're gonna to link it to gambling somehow or Vegas. So this is in, we did a, we did a Vancouver, Canada up to, where did we finish? Anchorage, Alaska. But we stopped in Skagway, and in Skagway, you can take the White Pass Yukon Railroad, and you can, if you choose to, do a five-hour train ride up to the Yukon Territory in Canada. And so this train was kind of traditional old school, you know, everybody's sitting in the the wooden old-timey cars, and there's there's a tour guide telling you about all this stuff that's going on, Chris. And I decided it would be more fun to stand outside between the two cars, because we had pretty good weather. And my car was full of lots of people who didn't seem to want to go outside. So I'm out between the two cars, just 
enjoying this train ride, riding the rails, feeling like, mm-hmm. you know, I'm an old time, you know, prospector up in Canada or I mean, in Alaska or whatever. And the tour guide is giving what you're seeing inside the train. This is what's going by and this is where the miners went and all that kind of stuff. I couldn't hear any of that outside. Mm-hmm. So I'm just going along, enjoying the sights and the train kind of curves. And you know how you can see up ahead as a train rounds a bend. I see, and we're on this mountainside, you know, you're, you're on these mountains, hundreds, thousands of feet drop off kind of scary stuff. And we're rounding this turn and there's a train bridge, you know, old school train trestle. And I see the middle of it is out. Uh-oh. <laughs> and I mean, like, this is like you a know, bad Spider-Man movie. He's well, that's what I was going to say. It's today. like on a movie, somebody blew the bridge <laughs> and we're, we're kind of, hold on, Josh. <laughs> yeah. Now, was there a guy on the side of the train track with a big handlebar mustache saying, hey, hey, you <laughs> that's know, what like, it push- seriously felt like oh, maybe pushing down a plunger too, you know, like it just happened. <laughs> it's like Rocky and Bullwinkle or something, right? Yeah, exactly. So we're, we're winding towards the train track, curving to the left. And here's this train bridge that's out. And I'm sitting out there all by myself between the two cars. I'm like, Please tell me somebody knows that the bridge <laughs> is out. Is this, right? <laughs> Seriously, we somebody has got to know that we're heading towards this bridge. I, I don't know what to do. And I'm kind of, you know, begin mildly freaking out. And then I see as we get a little closer, there's another bridge behind it. Oh, so we go, pa- we go past the one that was out and then go across another trestle just behind it. But I was terrified. <laughs> just like the main character in a TV show, Josh, I knew you survived because you're still here today. Because I'm here, right? We didn't go off the bridge. <laughs> but yes, as somebody that's afraid of heights in general, um, that would scare the shit out of me. Oh, it was terrifying. And I, of course, I went into the car after that and they said, oh, the tour guide was talking all about this whole bridge and, you know, things. So if I'd been inside, I wouldn't have had the problem at all. But no, no fear. That was the highlight of the trip, though. If you ever take an Alaska cruise, Chris, do this five hour train ride. It is it was the best part of the trip. That's a long way away from me, but maybe one day I will make it up your direction. I only got to play a tiny bit of craps on the cruise, but I know you got to play at least one session on your trip, right? It depends on what your definition of a session is. (laughs) Um, But yes, on the last night of the cruise, we wrapped up pretty early. Everyone was tired. I told the kids I was just going to walk around the boat for about a half an hour, 45 minutes, get away. And that was only my, my full intentions, just 30 minutes or so. Right, I went right. down to the casino just to check it out and see what the rules were and stuff like that. And I thought, well, like, well, if I'm here, I got to play a little bit, right? You know, just a oh, couple, yeah. couple shooters. And when I walked over, Josh, it's like they were greeting me. The Red Seas had parted. There was half of a table <laughs> wide open. The whole side of the table was empty. And I thought, well, this is perfect for somebody like me. I walked up. A guy was in the middle of the roll. Of course, he was a known controlled shooter. He was setting <laughs> dice like crazy. He did make a point while I was standing there and quickly sevened out right after I'm really glad, though, Josh, for the first time ever, I didn't buy in after he made his point. I told the base dealer I was going to wait for the next shooter. I'm glad I did because it was 0.7 immediately after. So so that was great. Um, Got bought in. I think I only bought in for a couple grand. It was a very small buy-in for me. Here's the rules that I think are worth pointing out to people. Now, granted, this was a Royal Caribbean cruise, and every cruise line has their own casino rules and everything else. Uh, But at least at the table I was at, if you were playing $15 at the $15 table, you could take one times odds. If you play 25, you could play two times odds, which is what I was doing. Okay. If you jump to 50, you could play three, four, five. So they tiered the odds based on your pass line bet. And we've heard about that before. Yeah. And I know you sent me a note, Chris, that they were really insistent about dice hitting the back wall. I mean, it's it's beyond like a suggestion. If it doesn't <laughs> hit the back wall, it's no roll, period. Both um, of them are just dice, one. Both, both dice much, must hit the back wall or it is a no roll. I saw them call no roll at least 10 times. And one time it actually hit the top rail like it was going to land in somebody's chips right. and then bounce back on the table because it hit them. Still, no and that roll. was a no roll. Wow. No roll because it didn't actually hit the wall. It hit the rail. They were insistent upon it. I will say I that is extremely annoying um, to have that because it really slows down the game. It makes it very confrontational between the players and the dealers. Sure. And worse than that, one time a player threw it. One of the dice hit the back wall. The second die looked like it didn't hit the back wall. Right. And of course, it was a seven out. And they went with the seven out. And one of the players started going off and then all the other players started joining in. And Josh, they're right. It's bullshit. You can't say it's a no roll if it doesn't hit the back wall on number that would have helped. And right. then say, oh, yeah, it's a roll because it was a seven out. 
And they did. They wouldn't back off. The guy started yelling at the box. You weren't even paying any attention. You don't know what you're saying. Oh, I was looking. I don't think he was. Right. Um, but none of the dealers seemed to notice either. Wow, that's too bad. Uh, they take the VIG up front. Um, I think okay. that's definitely worth pointing out. Uh, it is only three dollars in VIG on a uh, seventy-five dollar bet, though, Josh. Unlike there you Vegas, go. Where for some reason that's one advantage. Yeah. I don't understand why. Uh, other than that, nothing really important to mention. They don't have any feature bets on the table, at least on the allure of the seas boat. And other than that, oh, one thing, one thing worth pointing out. Yep. So people had mentioned before that you could, you know, theoretically take advances off of your like sale card, whatever they call it for each one. Um, if you give them your sailing card or whatever whatever it is you, yeah i don't know what it's called um i'm no cruise expert on obviously. princess it was a medallion that we had they will let you effectively take a marker off yourself take an advance off your cards if as long as it's tied to a credit card and they said that you can take up to five thousand dollars a day and up to i think they said up to twenty five thousand dollars on the cruise was the limits that they set they charge a five percent fee to do so which is probably higher than what your credit card company would charge if you were taking a cash advance. Right, right. Um, but, but that being said, the fee is waived for those that are in their second tier or higher of their casino program. And that requires 2,500 points. But quite frankly, I have no idea how many points I earned for my little 30-minute <laughs> session. And I may be their top tier now at this point. Who knows? Well, if you start getting offers for cruise, you know, gambling cruises... I mean, what do you think about though, though, Josh, being able to take an advance effectively off your credit card at, with no fees potentially? I well, you know, I say that. I wonder if the credit card company has it. There's that as too, a cash right? Advance. Well, but no, if it's coming, but I don't think they would because I think it's just hitting your sale account. Yeah, like it's just that's what I was thinking too. Folio as a normal transaction. Just a, right, right. So I wouldn't think there'd actually be any transaction fees. Yeah, it's just going to show up to the credit card as a fee from whatever. I mean, as your charge bill from whatever cruise line you're on, right? Yeah. So, I mean, that was something I was thinking about. Um, I, I mean, didn't have enough cash, you know, bringing back into the States where like more than 10,000 was going to be an issue. Right. Uh, but quite frankly, something I found interesting, and maybe you had the same experience coming back through customs on a cruise, they didn't do anything like any inspection. We came up, we walked up to a camera, it took our photo, it matched it with the passport that they scanned when we left the country. And then they just skirted us right through. We grabbed our bags and we were gone. We could have had like all the drugs in the world in our backpacks. Like I put them in my kids bags or something. And no, they would have had no clue, honestly. Yeah, I remember ours being pretty easy, too. I mean, we were Canada to the U.S., so that was that's always pretty easy. And I don't remember any issues. The funny thing was when we went up talking, going back to that train ride, because we went into Canada from Alaska, we had to go through mm -hmm. customs again on the bus in Carcross. Uh, Yukon territory. So they had CBP actually came on the bus and looked at our passports really quickly. In fact, I just think we had to hold them up and they just walked by the bus and kind of nodded. Oh, cool. So yeah, overall, Josh, it, it was a cool looking space. It felt very Vegasy, other than the low ceilings. They had a lot of slot machines that you would like, Josh. Um, I saw a Heidi's machine there. Oh, um, there were some piggies, some piggy banking. Oh, all sorts um, of fun. All that stuff was there. Drinks are not free. If you're a new casino player, you do have to pay for them. You give them your sailing card and they take it with them and come back with your drink and the bill. Um, but I think you do get them free at the second level as well. So it sounds like you really just got to earn 2,500 points and then you're all set. Right. Um, but I can tell you, I've already got an email from them offering me a free cruise based on my 30. There you go. <laughs> so it doesn't take much people. On our, I wonder if it would have on our cruise, our package that we got came with 15 deluxe drinks a day that i got. oh wow nice <laughs> so i wonder if that would have counted in the casino oh i'm sure it would have i think yeah. they just charge it well i can tell you this josh i did pay for the basic beverage package which was like sodas and bottled water right. and stuff right i don't drink soda but i do drink a lot of bottled water and i asked for a bottled water with my casino drink and i didn't have to pay for the water i just had to pay for the drink oh there you go of course so it sounds like the beverage package did work with that all right we should probably get off the cruise talk here yeah, that's probably a good idea. We're now like 15 minutes in and we haven't even told people how to get a hold of us. So let's do that. Okay. If you'd like to reach us via email, that's podcast at crapvegas.com. You can reach us on Facebook. That's crapvegas.com slash Facebook. You can leave us a voicemail, crapvegas.com slash voicemail. Or the easiest way is always on Twitter. X. Yay. Way to go, Josh. 
Uh, he's at Vegas Duffy. I'm at Small Whale 13, or the show page is at Crap Vegas. Okay, previous episode feedback. Last episode, we talked about the ideal Vegas property and what was important to us. Josh, we received a lot of feedback from listeners on their ideas and thought we should run through some of them. I like it. Okay, so from Joyce, we got, I want my getaway to make me feel pampered. Can't argue with that. I want my ideal property to have that, yeah. Yeah, when I think pampering, I think win. So good word association there. Shill. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, this is a non-sponsored advertisement. Thank you, Adam Bauer. Vegas Shaft said, comp drinks on demand while playing slots like they have an AC. Josh, have you ever seen the systems where you can touch on your Players Club screen and order a drink right from the machine? I have never seen that. And until that, that reply came through, I didn't know that was a thing. I think that's terrific. It's a big thing around me at Caesars Properties. Almost all my local places around me have that. You just touch on the screen and ask you what you want. You tap the buttons. And next thing you know, a drink's coming five, ten minutes later from a waitress. And assuming you pay for them here, um, but you you can order right from the machine. Gotcha. And I was going to say, assuming you've accumulated whatever play you need to, they'd be comp. But I guess that depends on where you are. Yeah, not where I am. Yeah, I don't care how much you play. That drink's not going to be free. (laughs) So, no, you definitely don't get that. But it is kind of nice if you're one of those people that wants a standard drink. Like, say you just want a Michelob Ultra. You just tap beer and hit Michelob. And the next thing you know, you got a beer coming your way. So there you go. Victoria says she wants quality and variety of dining. I do think that's important. You need to have a good mix there. Yeah, and I think we talked about that too with our with our higher end and restaurants and then and then kind of more casual. Mm-hmm. Uh, Two Way Hard Eight said he'd like to see a VP bar that comps craft cocktails. So that has me thinking like old school Cosmo. Yeah, I would think so. I would like that too. Okay. Chris says short front desk lines and fridges. So he completely bucks your no fridge <laughs> idea and says, screw you, Josh. Uh, the short front desk lines, yeah, that would be nice sometimes. The question is, do you want a real person at the front desk or do you want kiosks? You know, I don't mind kiosks. I know people don't like them. And if you're trying to do something like a $20 trick to get an upgrade or there's a specific room type that you want, I understand how kiosks hurt. But 90% of the time, if I'm not checking in at a VIP lounge where I know there's not going to be a line, I just use the app for a digital key or I go to a kiosk. I know you do. Yeah, you're you're more into the old dig- digital key thing than I am. But of course, I'm older. So, you know, we like we like in person. We like physical things. I like your regular old key and I like to see a person at the front desk. So Yeah, you boomers, you don't know how to use that technology <laughs> nowadays. I understand. It's hard. Uh, I'm going to say that this is Pen Seeker. It's P-I-N, the number six, E-E-K-R. I'm going to say pin seeker. Pin seeker. Um, I think it's it a could golfer. be something inappropriate, and I don't know. I'm just going to pretend. <laughs> he said, higher pants on the Altal Small, rooms with balconies, and no food courts. Um, yeah, the Altal Small payouts, it is really nice when you have the old school ones. My casino that I play at the most locally does have that. Rooms with balconies, I'm surprised more Vegas properties don't have them. But at Me the too. same time, there's, there's issues with offering balconies. Yeah, I, I like balconies to look at. Like if you're at Bellagio and you look over at the Cosmo balconies and see what's going on more than I actually like to hang out on balconies in Vegas. Okay, fair enough. That's okay. I can't say that I've spent so much time on Cosmo balconies, eating meals and overlooking the fountains and stuff. It is really cool. Isn't the Versailles Tower going to have some balcony rooms? Isn't that the it's, thing? It's supposed to, yep, at Paris. Yeah, it's definitely supposed to. So those should be nice. A couple other ones will fly through real quick, Josh. Uh, let's see. A lot of folks said three to two blackjack. Of course, that is really important. I think that that should be present at all casinos, at least at some level. Uh, Joseph said VIP check-in should always have an impeccable feel to it, which poses the question in my mind, Josh, what do you think property wise, which one has the best kind of ultra luxurious welcome? I think it's probably Bellagio's VIP check-in area. Uh, I mean, it's a darker room, so it has a kind of an intimate feel to it. I haven't had experiences where I've had huge lines there. As much as I like Sky Suites, and I think we've we like that experience, I don't find their check-in area to be particularly luxurious. Or it's wide open. There are a couple couches to sit at, but it's yeah, it's more of a like a cattle call area. Get everybody to come together. Yeah. And at Wynn, you actually have, I mean, this may be the case in some other properties too, but you have kind of three levels. You have the normal Wynn standard check-in area. You have the tower suites area. And then if you're even even more fortunate, you have the RFB 
exclusive check-in area, which is kind of through their RFB lounge, which is their food and beverage lounge for higher end players, that kind of thing. And then into that check-in area. And that's lovely. You know, unrelated to these luxurious ones, I remember the first time I hit Diamond uh, with Caesars and was able to check in in Planet Hollywood's Diamond Lounge. You know, because not every Caesars property has a Diamond check-in area. Right, right. Um, And if you're not familiar with where it is, if you see the escalators going up when you come in the main entrance, Josh, it's just to the left of that. Yeah, I remember that There's a glass door that leads back. Yeah. There's nothing luxurious about it. I mean, literally, it's just like five desks and a couple chairs. They don't even offer you water, at least. But it was always super quick, as far as I remember. But they got you in and out, usually. Yeah. You know, if you wanted a North Tower room, you get a North Tower room. And I just, there was something that you felt so special about being able to avoid the mass lines and going to a room that not everybody could go into. Right. Which reminds me, Chris, as as we're talking about this, I'm remembering a story in the Wynn RFB check-in area. A man came in and was asking for some sort of something or other that he wanted, and he kept his casino chips in a shoe, and he carried well, around this normal. like this Gucci tennis shoe or some exclusive, some high-end, uh, stylish tennis shoe full of his chips, and that was his good luck shoe. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, everybody has a good luck shoe. <laughs> I can't believe you don't know about that trip. It was it was really random. Yeah, people send me DMs all the time with their good luck shoe, and I just I ignore most of them. But I guess I need to start resharing those with you on the next episode. Tell us your good luck charms. Yeah, exactly. Uh, a couple last ones. Uh, Marilyn said, "Adults only pool in a beautiful spa," and I'm never going to discourage a European pool. You guys, you know, you just take your tops off and have a great time. <laughs> it's not what Marilyn meant. I'm sure it is, Josh. But I agree with the adults only pool and a spa. As you know, I like those. So that's I can't argue with that. Roger Burbank said a friendly casino staff for all, which I agree. I think the staff is what makes a property. And a lot of people also said a great poker room. That doesn't interest me too terribly much, but I can understand why that's a big draw for many people. Yeah, me too. I like to, as you know, I go and play poker sometimes. So I like to have it at least somewhere. Okay, so we got to take this whole list, Josh, put it all together, except for the fridges, because you and Chris are completely We have some disagreement on that, right. But we can put the rest of them together and truly create the ideal Vegas property. There we go. Should we now we just go fund me? Is that what uh, the next step is? Well, I was going to say we need a venture capitalist, but yeah, one or the other, right? Go fund me or or VC money, right? right? (laughs) (laughs) I wonder what the largest go fund me campaign is. I mean, I'm assuming it would be charity, you know, some sort of charity thing, but I'm sure. I wonder how much has ever been raised off, off one GoFundMe campaign. We'd need more. I have no idea. I'm going to guess and say a couple hundred million. You think that many? Wow. I think so. Or that much? Yeah, I think so. But we'll find out. For next episode, we'll have an answer. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Okay. Uh, another listener feedback. We got a message from Jack. I don't know how it came in, Josh. Was that email? DM? This was a what DM, was I think. Jack said, regarding the Palazzo High Limit Salon that we talked about on the last episode, He played there from like 10.30 a.m. to 2 p.m. on a Wednesday. Tables opened at noon, and he can confirm the craps table was $50 in the high limit pit. But he said it quickly changed to reserve when some guy, who quote was kind of an asshole, showed up to play. (laughs) It's a nice space, but perhaps a bit too secluded. Also, they were playing a strictly 90s hits playlist across all genres. Uh, Too (laughs) secluded. That's... Isn't that what you really want in a Highland? Well, that's what I was going to say. I'm going to say too secluded and 90s hits playlist kind of sounds right up my alley. I mean, that sounds almost (laughs) ideal to me. Get me away from everybody else. So I'm in my own special space and play 90s hits the whole time. Josh, I may have to book a trip to Palazzo. Right, to Venetian, right. Just Palazzo. Now that's, what, 30 years newer music than what usually plays at Wynn. So at least in the morning. Well, that is true. And then they can still change the tempo based on the time of day. But yeah, you're getting from the 50s, 60s at win up to the 90s. So that's exciting. (laughs) So thank you, everybody. Thanks, Jack. Thanks to everybody that replied to Chris's question and and, uh, talking about that. Okay, main topic time, Josh. Last episode, we hinted at this. But the main question this time is what is gone from Vegas now? that you miss. Vegas is always reinventing itself and things are removed, replaced, reconsidered. I thought it'd be fun to run through some of the things in your eyes that are now long gone in Vegas, but need to make a comeback. I think that's a good plan. Maybe Chris, let's go back and forth this time. I'll do one, you do one. So we're not stealing off each other's lists. Oh, good. Let's, let's do our production of the episode right in the middle of it. That's much better for people. That's what they appreciate us doing. <laughs> so much planning goes into these episodes. I can tell you this. Nobody ever can, confuses us with people that read off a script. <laughs> That's, that is which is good. not happening. We don't want to do that. 
All right, Chris, the first thing I have on my list that I'd love to see come back to Vegas was I was thinking somebody the other day posted a picture of the old MGM Grand. And when I say the old one, I don't mean the old, old one that was Bally's, but I mean the old one, the old new MGM Grand with the line that you walked through to get in. I missed that line. The first time I ever went to Vegas and stayed at was at the MGM Grand. And, and I remember going through that line, which I understand they took it out because it's bad luck and all that kind of stuff. But I loved walking through the line to go into MGM Grand. I'll take it a step further, Josh. That ties in well with the perfectly with the first one on my list. I think theming is gone in Vegas now and needs to come back. All theming. I mean, the over the top theming that is so gaudy and distasteful that it makes you sick. But I love it. I want more of it. Vegas used to be such a cool place visually to see things. It's just becoming generic more and more every day. We close down theme properties and we reopen it with a stupid name like The Link that means right. absolutely nothing, has no theming, it's gone. I had a couple examples I thought I would point out and get your feedback on. Uh, the first one, remember Rio showing the sky? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I used to love that. That was, again, I mean, to your point with theming, there's so many. I'm with you on that completely. And as much as we talk about our you know, enjoyment lately at Aria. Aria has no, no, theme you know, it's just, yeah, no theme at all. And I, I agree. I miss that. I mean, that was the nice thing about the old MGM grand was the whole wizard of Oz stuff and the carpet. And I agree. A couple other things I said along those lines, uh, Luxor had the Nile river ride that ran yep. throughout the property, which was really cool. Um, and then of course the treasure Island, the sirens of TI, they had their pirate show out front. That you could see all, uh, I think that ended roughly, I don't know, 10 years ago? Yeah, something point, like that. I, I love that. I did too. And all that stuff is disappearing day in, day out. I wish they would bring it back. I still want to see a single property on the strip go heavy on the theming and see how it does because nobody's going that direction. Now, there is a problem if you, you know, and to not throw Excalibur under the bus, but if you don't maintain the theming, then it gets kind of dreary and. Yeah, that's true. But I think they could still, I mean, if they had kept Excalibur up, I think it could still be a really nice property. I agree 100%. So what's number two on your list? So I have the Spice Market Buffet, which you and I have talked Planet about before Hollywood. at Planet Hollywood. <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, do you have that on your list? I haven't looked. I do not, um, oh. but I completely agree with you. I used to love the Spice Market Buffet. That, that was my favorite buffet in all of Vegas. And if you haven't been there it's, it's gone now, so you can't see it, but you had to actually take an escalator down in the middle of Planet Hollywood to get to the buffet. What's down there now? Any idea? I have no idea what's down there now. Yeah. Somebody will know. Is. Is this guy, but anyway, you took an escalator down to get to the Spice Market Buffet. It was really good at Planet Hollywood. So that's one thing. I've also got, speaking of Planet Hollywood, Zoomanity, the Cirque du Soleil Ooh, show. I did have that on my list. I'm a huge Zoomanity fan. We may be the only two people, Josh, because that show <laughs> got a lot of hate. But, you know, it's one of those shows where every time I took my girlfriend or wife or whatever it was to see, everybody had a good time. The live music was really good. And unfortunately, yeah. they got rid of it towards the end. But the acts were extremely talented. It's kind of like zombie burlesque in the sense that it, it walks up to that line of what's right. tasteful versus not tasteful. Um, but it never really crossed all the way over. I remember describing it to, to people as an assault on your senses. Everything, visually, the sound. You know, oh, it was strobe lights everywhere, right. lasers in your eye. Yeah, no, right. I gotcha. And I really, I really liked it, and I miss that. I, I do, too. Uh, for me, if you're talking about food that's gone, Josh, I listed Blue Ribbon Fried Chicken, which I mentioned last episode. <laughs> which I've never the had. promenade but... in front of Bally's. It was amazing. It fell off towards the end when I guess they came under hard financial times. But uh, it was one of my favorite restaurants in Vegas. And when I used to play extensively at Cromwell, I used to walk over there and eat maybe two meals a day. Now, surprisingly, I did not officially put milkshakes at snacks at Bellagio on my list, but that would be on my unofficial list to bring back is the milkshakes at snacks. <laughs> I think everybody in America knows that. Knows so that. that. How about any shows, Chris? Did you have, well, I mean, we have Zumanity, but any other like performers or anything that you had? No, nothing like that. I, I definitely wish Zumanity would come back, but there was no one-time performance or anything like that that I was hoping would make a comeback that hasn't. Like, I'm not saying, like, Mystica or whatever has to come back right. again or anything like that. The one that I have is kind of the Vegas staple is and, and was supposed to be at Resorts World, but because of her health, is Celine. So okay. many people loved coming to Vegas to see her. I saw her show once, and I'm glad I did. Not that I would be in a hurry to see it again, but she really is kind of synonymous with what Vegas, modernish Vegas. And it's too bad she didn't get to have kind of the, the 
assuming that she doesn't come back and perform. It's too bad. She didn't get, go out the way I think she had hoped to. Okay. Well, let's continue on. We just I just mentioned Cromwell. Josh, I wish the original Cromwell would come back. When Caesars opened that property up, the Cromwell was everything I wanted in a Vegas casino and a Vegas property. It right. had three to two blackjack. It had a hundred times odds, single zero roulette. It was a terrific place. To it have. had a nightclub on the roof. You could go up to Dre's at night if you wanted to have a nightclub to do your thing at. The hotel was beautiful. It was boutique. It was small. You didn't have long corridors to get to your room. They had coffee service on two floors where you could go get your own espresso in the morning, which was amazing. It was free. Eat well, what used to be open 24 hours a day. And I still to this day say they had the best nachos in America, bar none. <laughs> and what did they do with COVID? They made Eat Well open like five hours a day and they took the nachos off the menu and they've never been back. Uh, do we have a nacho Not question happy. coming up? I think we have a nacho no, question somewhere. But I have a feeling as we move forward, the nachos at Cromwell are going to become my milkshakes <laughs> at Bellagio <laughs> Comment. The only th last thing I had, Chris, on my list was I miss two and three dollar craps at Casino Royale. And on the strip, low limit craps was a lot of fun. That's where I cut my teeth playing craps was at cheap craps at Casino Royale. Terrible dealers. I don't mean necessarily bad professionally, but grumpy, surly dealers. Oh, sure. Yeah. You know, wouldn't take crap from anybody and really low limit. You could play for just forever on 250 bucks. And I miss that. Well, I mean, it ties into the last thing I had on my list, Josh, value. I think value keeps disappearing from Vegas more and more each year. All the fees that keep adding up, room fees and ticket fees and CNF charges at restaurants and parking for here and there, all that stuff gets worse and worse every year. And a place that you used to be able to go with $300 for a week right. and get by on, that's long gone. I mean, your daily resort fees will eat that up pretty darn quickly, no matter what you're paying for the room. I do think it's worth mentioning that even though rooms do have these fees associated with them, in the grand scheme of things, compared to large cities, it is still a reasonable value. Yeah. If you're talking like a New York City room that might be three or $400 a night, and they're going to charge you for parking too and stuff. But that's not what New York City is known for. They're not known as a value proposition. Vegas is. And I think somebody that hasn't been to Vegas in 20 or 25 years, if they came now, they wouldn't even know what they're looking at. Right. No, I agree. I still think there's some... There's, as you said, there's some value there compared to other places, but it's not what it was for sure. Now, if you're fortunate enough to play at a level where you can get some, some things comp, then that's where, you know, some, some greater value comes in for sure. Oh, for sure. Our life is much easier than the average gamblers. I fully understand that. Right. So I think that's it for us. But if you have any thoughts about things you'd like to see come back to Vegas, whether it's gambling related or show or restaurant related, give us a shout. We'd love to hear what you have. Okay, F1, Josh. F1 weekend has now passed. We have firsthand accounts from people that were there. Tons of secondhand accounts on Twitter and anywhere else you want to look to get some feedback on the thing. It had a lot of hiccups pop up the last week with manhole and manholes pop off up the ground right. and <laughs> things being canceled. And all of a sudden, ticket prices were 20% of what everybody paid at the beginning. And you could just get them from any guy on the street that wanted to give them to you. What are your thoughts about F1 and how it went? I don't know who won, I although either. I think that they were somehow tied with win because Chris and I got tagged in a picture of the winning team in the back of a wit of a win Phantom Rolls Royce saying that it was oh, interesting. <laughs> so it was a in some way or another win was was a big sponsor of the winning team or something. I don't know what happened. But anyway, I don't know who won the race. As to other thoughts, it seems like from a casino perspective from the financials of the big cas strip casinos, it seems like they have nothing but glowing things to say about it. You know, you say that, Josh, and I think everybody out there has probably seen someone post about the amount of tokes that Wynn took in on yep. Saturday night. That number has varied between 700,000 and a million, um, which is a large amount. Everybody seems to think there was one player that contributed a significant portion of that. Um, but, you know, my thought is that it's exactly what I expected it to be. Right. It's an event that's catered to extremely rich people that are going to come into town and spend a good amount of money. The casinos are going to do great. They had all sorts of record numbers for credit open and in play that weekend. The dealers probably did really well at the high end properties. 
the only problem I have with this whole thing is it ignores the damage that's done to not only residents, just everyday people in Vegas, but especially small business in that area. Nobody right. talks about the secondhand effects on them and what it did to their business with the road construction that took place, drawing everybody away from the strip because nobody wants to be near that mess. I mean, there's just so many things. It's just, it feels like a logistical nightmare for a lot of people that actually live there. And it sure as heck was not targeted towards any sort of moderate gambler. Right. So we listened to some casino earnings calls kind of in the last couple of months or so talking about what the what the casinos expected. And I think they got what they expected, Chris, which, as you said, was high limit credit players that put a lot of money in. And so those those higher end strip properties, I'm sure, did fine. But I agree with you. I'm curious to see when it shakes out how the little guys did, whether they're smaller properties or whether they're, as you said, you know, restaurants. I mean, let's take Batista's, for example, right there sure. behind or next to Bally's behind Cromwell, wherever it is. I think I heard they were actually closing for a period of time because it just wasn't feasible for them to be open that you know restaurants like that mm -hmm. no I'm, I'm, I'm right there with you i'm sure the big players did great all the reports that i've seen from people that listen to our show and have shared it with me or put it on you know public social media they seem to indicate that they had no problem finding lower level tables throughout the strip and many people said crowds were actually far less than they actually expected them to be which doesn't surprise me because i expected the people coming to this to kind of congregate in just two or three properties. Right. I don't think anybody that's really coming to F1 because they want to do this experience is staying at Planet Hollywood. They're not. They're staying at Wynn. They're staying at Bellagio. They're staying maybe at Caesar's Palace. They're doing one of the higher end places because that's what they're catered for. The lower level properties, probably I would expect them to have lower attendance that weekend than what they typically expect. I know a lot of people said that off strip and downtown were a real value that weekend um, because you could kind of get away from that and they had to do right. something to draw you in. I have no idea how they did, though. Yeah, I think, what do you think, Chris, from a spectacle standpoint? I mean, I have a feeling from what I've seen and some of our listeners that have reached out that went to go and see the race had a great time. And I think that from a TV perspective, I watched a little bit of it. I didn't watch the whole race. It looked phenomenal. I mean, I think it looked great. I, I agree with you 100%. I was obviously not anywhere that I could watch it at the time. I've rewatched it on TV now from some stuff I recorded. It looked terrific. It's exactly what you expect. Vegas overhead, no matter whether there's a race or not, is, yeah. always looks really cool. It just does. Vegas knows how to put on a show. I mean, that's one of the things that Vegas does well is, you know, there might be no substance behind behind the facade, <laughs> but yeah. it puts on a great facade. No, they really do. So the big question in my eyes, Josh, will it be back next year? Yes or no? Oh, yeah, I think it will. And I think the question that I've heard tossed around is, will it be back on the strip next year? And that's what I'm most curious about is, do they change the track so it's not impacting the strip the way that it has? But I think it'll be back. My understanding is they have a three-year, they have a 10-year contract, but that the last seven years of the 10-year contract is open to some, some wiggle room. Options. Right. Yeah. But the, three, the first three years is pretty much set in stone, I think. I mean, there's, there's probably, there's always outs, but so I expect it to be back. I'm curious about, they say that it's going to be less uh, set up and take down time the next time around and that kind of thing. But this is a really big impact. So I'm oh, curious sure. too. Yeah, I don't think there's any way to overstate how much it impacted roads and travel and business and all that stuff. It, it was big. We'll be back in a couple of weeks. So we'll find out how, you know, if everything's down by then. And if nothing else, on Patreon, I'm sure we'll have some earnings calls that talk about it. Josh <laughs> right. loves earnings calls. <laughs> I do. Okay, listener question and comment time. First email from Bart. Bart says, hey, Josh. What? Hey, Josh. <laughs> Yay! Thanks, Bart. What, what, is, what is that? Hold on, Chris. Before you go on, Bart is a great name for an old train you know, train episode <laughs> like Bart strikes me as the old West guy. Josh, you have one fan, literally one fan. And now you're making fun of his <laughs> now name. I've, now I've That's insulted Bart. Sorry, choice. Bart. <laughs> okay, go ahead, Chris. Start over with, hey, Josh. Okay, let's try this again then. Hey, Chris and Josh, I uh, really love your podcast. And it's really nice. You let others do that podcast with you. Oh, because he was talking to you. Because he was talking to me. God, yeah. That's even worse. Can we edit this whole question out <laughs> at this point? Let's just move on. So Bart said, if MGM gives me comp rooms for my next trip, while Caesars doesn't, 
Last trip, I split my action, and am I allowed to use that word with my money? Between all properties. I have never played craps, but I will try it on my next trip. We'll give you a heads up so you can join my first session to benefit from my first timer's <laughs> luck. Very nice. Still love your podcast since I really enjoy your Vegas stories, although I do not understand a word of that craps talk. <laughs> Is it all to all small, alter small, or all tall small? <laughs> I can't figure it out. Don't worry about it, Bart. It's not important. You don't need to play it. It's a horrible house edge bed anyways. You just focus on the pass line when the time comes. I thought you were going to say, don't worry about not knowing craps. I think a lot of our listeners don't know when we when we get to talking craps, just fast forward 30 seconds at a time and get through the craps talk if that's not your thing. It's confusing. Yeah, that's probably, that's yeah. probably a good idea. Anyways, uh, Bart has some questions though for us, Josh. He says, as I now have some more bucks to spend on gambling on my next trip, totaling to $1,000, what should my table minimum and crap strategy be to get the most time on a table? And what property would you start with? Oyo? Well, not Oyo. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I can't recommend that. Uh, I think you said you get comped at MGM properties, right? Not Caesars. Yeah. So, Bart, I would say a lower tier MGM property would be a great place. I mean, Excalibur, I think, has good, fairly lower limit craps at a, at a nice property chain like MGM. That's what I would say to start with. We've talked a little bit before about what I think, you know, what we think your initial bet should be. I think $1,000 is fine. If you can find a $10 table, that's even better. But a $15 table, play a minimum bet on the 6-8 and a pass line bet would be my, my thought as a way to get started. Easy peasy. Yeah, Josh nailed it. If you look back through some of our episodes, I know we talk about that a handful of times. So just check the show notes and you'll see which episode it is. If we were a better podcast, I would tell you what episode it is, <laughs> but we just don't do that much planning. Um, so it's in one of those episodes back there. So what? why not Oyo, Chris? Mm, well, if it was Hooter still, <laughs> then I would say yes for the visual stimulation that you could get from going there. I don't have anything against Oyo. I don't have anything for Oyo, but I, I don't have any feelings particularly one way or the other. But my thought is st stick with MGM since they're comping you and play there. Uh, do you have a favorite Caesars or downtown property? From other episodes, I think it might be Circa and Caesars Palace. Well, somebody did not listen very closely. Because <laughs> if I had to pick two answers that I would not recommend, <laughs> those would be it. <laughs> well, you know, Bart, Bart's from overseas. Maybe something got lost in translation a little bit. Probably. I think my favorite downtown property to play, and Chris and I have gone there before, and we're probably overdue for a trip, is Golden Gate. I really like to play at Golden Gate. It's fantastic low limit gambling. Yes, it's really loud as all DS properties are, but you can get some good cheap drinks and just have fun playing low limit. You're, you're probably going to get bad odds, at least on roulette and low, low, you know, lower limit, some of the lower limit games, but who really cares? It's still a fun place to play. As far as staying, I haven't stayed downtown, so I don't have a, you know, a real good piece of advice. I would like to stay, as I've said before, at Circus sometimes. I know that's me and not necessarily Chris. I'd like to stay at Golden Nugget. Probably those would be my two thoughts for downtown to stay. Yeah, I, th I think that's good. Golden Gate is a great place to play. And the good news is, if you play craps at Golden Gate, you really get good arm exercise because the tables are about oh, those 27 tables feet are, long. Yes, they um, are. And the dice go off a pretty much every roll, so you get extra steps when you go to pick up the dice. So it's really good for exercise purposes. If you're going to stay downtown, I do like the D. I think it's a good place to stay. Um, Caesars property wise, I think Josh and I both lean towards planet Hollywood or Paris. Yep. Yep. That's the kind of the two that we always recommend. They're great properties. The location is unmatched and they're just, you know, they're, they're fun places to be. Yep. And maybe the new rooms at Paris would be, would be fun too. If you're, if you want a newer room, the Versailles tower when it's sure. open. Uh, he said, why don't you play at resorts world at all? I really like the floor there. We actually just talked about resorts world on the last episode and gave a lot more detailed thoughts about it. So if you want to go back and listen to episode 41, you'll get a lot more of our thoughts on Resorts World. It's a nice property. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just not my cup of tea. Yep. I feel the same way. Do you only play in the U.S.? He asked. Have you tried Macau? I would love to go to Macau. When, if you are listening to this, we are constantly <laughs> looking for a sponsorship. I would be glad to fly out there, test it all out for you guys and give you feedback on it. It's just not something I've ever had the chance. But as I mentioned earlier this episode, I did play in international waters. I guess you could probably call it the Bahamas at the time. Um, I've played in Mexico before. I played in Canada many times when I was younger and talked about that before. Um, but no, I haven't played in Europe. And I do want to get to uh, England sometime. 
but I've heard that the Hippodrome lost its table. So that it did. But I learned from you can bet on that. There is in in Wales, there's a a casino with a craps table, I think. So we just have to go to Wales. Yep. Just have to get on. Josh, I really do think we need to schedule a crap Vegas international experience where you and I go to something like Macau and try it. I thought you were going to say Wales. I, I, we could, I would go to Wales too. I would love to go to Macau. But speaking of Wales, did you know I lost my high school letterman's jacket in Wales? Is this a bad is, joke or is this no, a this true is, story? No, that's a true story. I left my okay. high school letterman's jacket in a hotel room in Wales. Okay, I've never been to Wales, so that's never popped up for me before. <laughs> How's that for a random? <laughs> but I thought you were taking like the old idea where you throw a joke into the beginning of every episode and you were going to plug it into the no, middle. No, there's no joke there. starting off very good. <laughs> Although the joke, if you want to ask me, you're supposed to, I guess here's the joke, Chris. Ask me what I lettered in. What did you letter in, Josh? Could you guess? Any guesses about what I might have lettered in? No, I don't have a guess. Should academics. I? Academics. Oh, well. I had a letterman's jacket because I lettered in academics. It's probably for the best that I lost it in Wales. Yeah, I think so. That's, uh, <laughs> that's quite embarrassing. Um, but that's okay. Um, okay, he says, by the way, Chris, just messing with you. Oh, good. He redeemed himself at the very end of the email. That's After you restarted the it. thing? Yeah, just messing with you. You were doing a great job there. Just letting Josh shine for a moment. Best Bart. You know, that is nice because Josh doesn't get, I don't, a lot of I don't get enough time to shine. Yeah. You know, he is the cute Tudley bear. The Tudley bear. What? <laughs> <laughs> God, I'm sick and I can't even think. You're I'm a Tudley, Tudley bear. bear. <laughs> oh, Josh really is the cute teddy bear of our podcast. And, you know, he deserves a lot more love than he gets. I'm just the gruff young man that just has very opinionated <laughs> thoughts. So, So thank you, Bart. Well, according to Josh's typing, we have an a meal from David, which I think is an email and he just doesn't know how to spell. Uh, but David says, love your show and you both reflect my love of craps as the most social of all gambling and a chance to hang with friends. I have a couple questions. I tend to pocket my first big wins, literally take the profit chips off the rack and put them in my pocket to remove rat holing. Yep. Does that habit impact my rating? Maybe lowering my Theo. Second, have you guys ever had an experience with a cooler or something else the casino <laughs> might do to disrupt a hot table? Uh, thanks for the great work, David. Uh, first of all, on the cooler question, no, but I have seen William H. Macy in the cooler. Terrific movie. Highly recommend yes. it. But are coolers real? No. Quite frankly, the casino doesn't care enough. If you're a counter, they might rotate dealers more often, depending on where you're playing. Uh, but other than that, no, the casino doesn't really care what's going on one way or the other. Yeah. And I think as you're on, a, if we're just talking about craps, if you're on a hot craps roll or the table is really hot, you will see, you know, lots of suits and supervisors come and stand around hot tables and things like that. And I don't think that's to cool it off. I think that's because they're trying to make sure that mistakes aren't made as the stakes get higher and the table gets hotter. That's what they want to be. That's what they're concerned about. I agree with you. As the bets get larger and larger, you'll notice that boxes start paying a heck of a lot more attention to what's going on. If you got a quarter on the line with 50 behind it, whatever. If you have 500 on the line with 2,500 behind it, they're going to make sure that that pays off correctly. And you might see, you know, I'm with Chris. I don't really believe that those things have have an impact. But when you're in a hot roll and something goes wrong, you start looking for what caused it. And it's easy to say, it's because they brought all those suits or it's because we had a stick change or, you know, those kind of things. Oh, they sent the cocktail waitress right. and all that stuff. And I yeah. buy into a little bit for fun, but we all know that's not really what happened. So your habit to rat hole chips, stick them in your pocket as you're playing, does it affect your rating? No, it doesn't affect your rating. Your rating's just based off the chips that you haven't played at any given time. So they don't care how many chips you have in your rack or how many chips you have in your pocket. Does it lower your Theo? Not your Theo, Right. It could potentially lower or increase depending on what you're doing. It could impact how much they show you winning or losing for a session. So if that's important to you, but quite frankly, boxes and floors are not idiots. If chips are missing out of circulation, especially if they're larger denomination chips, whenever somebody colors up, they just assign those chips to you like you had them anyways. Yeah, they usually know what you're doing. And dealers usually rat you out after the fact anyways and say, hey, he's sticking some <laughs> chips in his pocket. Um, they have to assign those chips somewhere, so you're probably going to get assigned them. If it helps you from a gambling perspective to make sure you walk away, go for it. It really That's what I was going to say, all, Chris. But no, it, it doesn't impact your Theo. It doesn't impact your rating at all. The only people that really do it as a true play 
again, are probably counters. Counters are trying to not show that they're a lifetime winner um, <laughs> because, if, quite frankly, I don't care what you're doing. If you show up as a lifetime winner at a casino over an extended period of time, you're probably going to get backed off anyways. Yeah, lifetime winner is not an issue I have. No, for, me, though, issue for me, though, for me, though, sometimes I will put some green chips in my pocket or red chips or I'm carrying around, you know, loose change from a past session or things like that. I like it because it is a little bit, you know, let's say we've bought in for $2,000 and I stick over the course of a session 100 bucks in my pocket in chips, whether they're green or red. I never stick black chips in my pocket for the same reason that Chris said, because they're keeping an eye on those. And sometimes boxes will actually ask you, do you have any? Because they want to keep a real close eye on those higher denomination chips. But for me, it's a situation where, as I said, let's say we bought in for two grand. If I can lose it all, but still walk away with a hundred in my pocket, I feel somewhat, you know, well, at least I didn't lose the whole two grand. So there's just a little bit of that to me. It's a head start on the next session. That's yeah. all it is, which is awesome. Okay, final question this week, Josh. We got a DM from Sean. uh, That's ATX underscore gambler on Twitter, or X if you're interjecting here. X. Um, And he's also a patron, who an upgraded patron, Josh, you say. Oh, right, yeah. Thank you, Sean, very much. So upgraded means what, Chris? What does that mean? Uh, He moved from the entry-level patron to the the top-of-the-line known control shooter level. So thank you for doing that, Sean. We really do appreciate it. He also sent a really nice message, Josh, about the quality of the hoodie that he got. He bought a coffee dice hoodie. And he confirms for everybody that it is the softest hoodie he's ever owned. (laughs) And he wants to buy like 50 of them now. So, Oh, perfect. Thank you, Sean. And Sean has also been active on the Facebook group, introducing himself to everybody. So thank you, Sean, for joining the community. You've been a, a great benefit so far. Yeah, absolutely. So Sean's message, Josh, he says, I know you guys have somewhat transitioned over to MGM from being total win fans, but I would love to hear some of your favorite perks or meals at win besides free rooms. Have you been to Sinatra's or any other cool restaurants besides room service? I have only been to win once in my life and can't imagine having the run of the house there. It is such an amazing property. Once again, keep up the great work. Don't worry about podcast links. The longer, the better. I'm already on my <laughs> second time around listening to the original episodes, and I can't believe how much I missed the first time around. Sean, Sean, thank you for the message. Really appreciate it. Yeah, when's a pretty darn amazing property? We've never said it wasn't. We have issues with it from time to time for many reasons, but there are so many cool restaurants and things to do there. Yeah. And I have been to Sinatra, Chris. I don't know if you've been to Sinatra. I have not. I've been to Allegro, but I haven't been to Sinatra. I've only been once so far, and I thought it was phenomenal. I mean, really, I found the menu to be a little bit um, smaller menu, which good or bad, depending on what what you're in for, but just really, really good. And coincidentally, Sean, uh, as you ask these questions about when our last Patreon episode talked a lot about some of the special experiences or one of the special experiences that we've had at Win, So pop on over to Patreon if you want to get a little more Win talk. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, cool place. I mean, we're trying to spread our play out a little bit for different reasons. We get a lot more offered to us when we bounce over to MGM for a random weekend. Um, but no, Win's always going to have a special place in our hearts. And I will go to my grave saying that Win has by far the best dealers in the world when it comes to craps. They're all amazing. Their worst dealers are some of the best dealers at other properties. It's just a great place to play. I agree. And we'll be back there again before the end of the year. So it's not, we haven't, we haven't uh, divorced win or what was that you say trans- transitioned over to MGM from being total win fans. We're still win fan boys. Yeah. And I think I'll be there in two or three weeks and I know you're going to be there soon too. Yep. I'll be there the day after you leave. Yeah, of course. Just wait for me <laughs> to get out of there. That's right. So thank you, Sean, for hinting at it a minute ago, but patreon.com slash crap Vegas, all sorts of exciting stuff going on over there right now, Josh. What's the most recent one? Well, as I said, we did a whole episode on, uh, not a whole episode, but most of a whole Patreon episode on my experience via win to get to go to the red carpet, blue carpet at the Academy of Country Music Awards in March of 2022, which was a fantastic experience. I told that story with some fun parts to it in the last in the last patreon show so that's what's most recent big thank you to those that have joined over the past two weeks that's joseph s terry a seven out line away interesting choice to pick a seven out line. i was gonna say that too (laughs) daniel h erica b and i love this yo 11 11 um i guess he really likes pointing out that 11 you know it's a 22 Oh, do you think we should just rename it as 22 now? <laughs> 22, 11, 11, 22. 22. Thanks, 22. We appreciate it. 
on our NFL survival pool on Patreon, Josh, we have nine entries left out of the original 77. And Ooh. I am, and I know this is gonna make everybody really sad. I'm unfortunately out of the competition now. I'm out of the competition on Tim from the Better Life's Survivor Pool. And Chris, do you know why I'm out? You forgot to make a pick. Because I forgot to make a pick, yes. That's what I'm gets people most of the time. Very mad at myself about that. But on a positive note, Josh, the fade Chris and Josh football picks of the week, I am now 18 and 17 overall, so I have a winning record, a good way through the season. And if you have been fading Josh's NFL picks, <laughs> you would now be 21, 10, and 1. That is insane. It is very insane. But tell everybody who doesn't know, if you're not a Patreon subscriber, what my record is in college football. Josh is 3-0 and oh now. Three weeks Woo. in a row, he has nailed his NCAA pick that he makes each week. I mean, just fade his NFL, take his NCAA choice. I, I don't know what to tell you. It's free money. The, the few bucks you pay us, you're getting it well back the first time you follow Josh <laughs> in a weekly bet. It's, it's, it's definitely worth it. But that is not an official, an official binding commitment that those <laughs> you, fast, you, Lord, past, <laughs> right, past <laughs> results are not, not indicative of future performance. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> one more thing, Chris, going back to that Patreon episode, Patreon episode, I just want to say it was one of my favorites. So if you are a patron, give it a listen. If you haven't yet, I really enjoyed it. It was fun to tell that story and put it together. Upcoming trips. So we both have one more trip scheduled before the end of the year. We're both going to win. Mine is December 8th through 10th. Yours is the 11th through 14th. Perfect. We have that whole week locked out. <laughs> Bracketed. I if yeah. Let us have the same room. Like if you, if I get done in the room. Oh my God, that would be and funny. I can leave you like a little <laughs> note in it that says Chris was here. Josh, I did this in this corner. It's like you know. the outgoing president leaves a note for the incoming president. Exactly. Is that kind of an idea, right? <laughs> no, but that definitely isn't the case because I have a normal room. That's what I was just going to throw in there, right? A suite. So I don't know what's going on there. I have a salon suite. I'll have oh, you know. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Jerk. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that. It feels like it's been years since I've been at Win. It, it does, doesn't it? A couple months. Um, but it, yeah, it's, it, it's just great to get back there to see all the people say hi before the end of the year. And Josh, I still may have to run out for one final flight this year to get my status I need on Delta. And if I do it, I'm not joking. It probably will be Palazzo. I, I, I fully support that. I think our listeners would love to hear what you think. It's been a few years since I've stayed there, so I'll be cur really curious to hear what you think, too. Okay. Friendly reminder to subscribe, like, and review our podcast on your favorite podcasting app and visit our merch store. That's crapvegas.com slash shop. Josh, I did single out a review that came in the last week or two that I wanted to mention on here. We got a review from Fan of Bob. Uh, Bob said, Fan five stars. Bob. This podcast is great. The back and forth banter between Chris and Josh make you feel like you're just sitting around talking with old friends. It's called Crap Vegas, but it covers a lot more. Anyone interested in Vegas or gambling in general will get a lot from the show. Both hosts are very familiar and educated on the topics of craps, comps, and traveling, and always bring the listener into their world with excellent trip reports and detailed reviews, including everything from game conditions to restaurants to casino hosts. They have quickly endeared themselves and gained the respect of other great podcasts, such as You Can Bet On That. Look at that. We got an endorsement. Uh, these guys are the real deal. Keep up the great work. Just don't spill that lemon drop. So <laughs> thank you, fan of Bob. What an awesome review. We do appreciate it. And please continue to leave amazing reviews for us. It helps us get out for other people to find us. Absolutely. Thank you very much, friend of, friend of Bob. Is that what it is? Friend no, of Bob? fan of Bob. Fan of Bob. Thank you very much, fan of Bob. You should Josh, be a fan of Crap Vegas, up. but... Yeah. Anything else you want to talk about before we get out of here? So, Chris, we talked about F1, but we didn't talk about the more important event that happened in Vegas in the last week or so. Any idea what it was? Are, are you talking about the adult video show? No. <laughs> Because I do not have a comment. <laughs> was that there this week, this past week or so? I feel like it, I've seen something about that on Twitter. I don't recently. think I saw the AVNs were there, but no, I'm talking about something. The 33rd running of the housekeeping Olympics just occurred oh, yes, in Las Vegas. That. That's exciting. Yeah. And so I, re I was reading about it. It's actually really fascinating. There are six events, bed making, a mop race, vacuuming, a buffer pad toss a spirit dance, and the executive challenge. And the executive challenge is where hospitality team bosses navigate a slalom course driving floor scrubbers. Oh, wow. So fancy. <laughs> and so there were competitors from, I think, seven Las Vegas hotels, a team from the Department of Defense, 
and a team from Canada. And I'm really confused about the housekeeping team from the Department of Defense. <laughs> it's a diverse group they have there, Josh. I mean, don't be hating. And they gave penalties for imperfect hospital corners, ill-measured bedspread foldouts, all sorts of things like that. You know, if there's one thing I hate about hotel beds is always how tightly they have the sheets un- uh, tucked in. I always have to untuck the whole Me damn too. thing and let it flow because that's so annoying. <laughs> I it's agree. It's important to them. Anyway, I thought that when I read about these, the housekeeping Olympics happening, I didn't even know this was a thing. And this is the 33rd running of the housekeeping Olympics. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, congratulations to all those that won. I thought this was a good opportunity to thank the housekeepers in all seriousness. That is a hard, thankless job. And so that they're having fun with this. And, and that was neat to see from the pictures they saw and the enthusiasm and things like that. So just a thank you to the housekeepers. I know this, it's a it's a really hard job and a thankless job. And we do our best. And I encourage you, if it's your thing, to tip your housekeepers on every trip, because that's a, a nice thing for those folks, in my opinion. Yes. And please leave a tip every day instead of one tip at the very end, because you could be screwing over the people that cleaned your room the whole time you were there. So just, yeah, leave a couple bucks every day. They really appreciate it. It's the right thing to do. Yep. If you were going to leave 10 or 20 bucks at the end, just separate that into each night of your stay and that'll make each of them happy. Yep, for sure. Okay, guys, thank you all for listening. We will talk to you soon. Thanks, everybody. Bye bye. Thanks for listening to the Crap Vegas Podcast. Have you ever been to Vegas? Check out all our recent news and our Vegas trip calendar by visiting crapvegas.com. See you in Vegas. Okay, so if you want to reach us via email, that's X. podcast. What? <laughs> <laughs> what in the world are you doing? <laughs> X? No. <laughs> Yeah, x at crapvegas.com, fuckers. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Okay, you ready again? Yes. Yes.